Welcome back everybody to another module of QTM 200 Applied Regression Analysis. In this module we're going to be talking about how we can use the different uh, measures of model fit that we talked about in previous modules to try to select the most parsimonious or the most efficient model that we can given some subset of covariates that we're interested in. And as you might remember, our overarching goal every week is that we're trying to make inferences from a given sample to an overarching population. And last week, we talked about how to transform variables uh, given skewness and non-constant variance, as well as how to deal with issues of collinearity. And something that we've talked about in previous weeks as well is how to assess models based on their fit, specifically with regard to things like the AIC, BIC, and R squared. And today, we're gonna to talk specifically how to use those measurements to try to select a more parsimonious or efficient model. And the idea here is that we wanna find the smallest set of variables which provides an adequate description of the data. And the important thing to remember is that there is no perfect model of the world. We're gonna have an imperfect model and we wanna to try to essentially do our best, right? Because all we can do is try to consider what the most important explanatory variables are to explain our data generating process. That's really what we're aiming to do because if we try to you know, assemble an entire list of variables that may impact our outcome. One, that's not very theoretically driven, and so I would really highly recommend against that. And two, you're gonna end up with a ton of potential models, right? So if we have K candidate variables, if you throw in more and more variables, that's gonna exponentially increase your potential models. And so we're only going to talk about a couple of methods for model selection during this lecture, but just know that in general, I suggest having model selection be driven by theory and not necessarily by statistical results. And I'll talk about that again at the end of the lecture, but I can't stress that enough that what you really want to do is try to accurately describe the theoretical data generating process that you're interested in and we can use these tools to help us achieve that. 